What's up, FB? Yeah, I'm in my same shirt. I got married at. I got married at. But uh, I just thought about something. I was talking to my wife. And, uh, you know, um, there was something that happened Saturday. Uh, you know, I was at the park with the boys. And we're, we were talking and they were debating about buying land. It was like eight of us out there. And was at Sugar Creek Park and the person was talking about buying land and what the white man doing, what the black man's doing differently, you know, and how black people can't work together and things like that. Like it was real passionate. And then afterwards, you know, deep during the conversation, um, the dude just bust out. He said, yeah, I drink, I'm tired of drinking. I'm tired. I just want to have a family. I want to have something to provide for my son. I just want to do these things. I want to settle down. Out of frustration, dude was like 43 or 44 years old. Um, and he was just hurt. He was just like, uh, you know, after the conversation of buying land and what the white man's doing and stuff like that, compared to what the black man's doing and how black people can't stick together, it was like frustration of him being black you know, living in this society, you know, and, and, you know, being hurt. I feel that it came from hurt that he's not able to do these things that he has within his mind that white people have all of this power. You know, and I, I express that like we, like blacks, a lot of blacks that are frustrated and don't want to deal with the losses and don't want to deal with the failures, give white people who really don't even think about us like that so much power, and they really are not thinking about what black people are doing or how black people are acting. They might laugh at reality TV on how we're acting and stuff like that, but they're doing no different than we're doing. So really, they really don't give us that much attention as much as black people think. And we got into that debate and he came across to me and he was like, you know, you got, you got a, a powerful calling. He was like, you know, you're doing big for the community. You're doing a lot of stuff big in the community, but it's a way that you're going about things, you know? And he, he addressed that it felt like I was looking down on people on the internet. And I went across Judy's son, I was reading her what I just commented about. If y'all, um, if, if y'all basically, while y'all thinking about the greatest rapper of all time, I'm thinking about the greatest man who ever lived, Jesus, right? And I put it in that little colorful thing because the iPhone just got touch on the, on the powerful, th on the, um, what is it, how with them, them colors when you post, you can, pick out your colors and things like that. But, uh, you know, it's not that I'm looking down, but it's just a passion of, you know, what I see from what I've been through and what I see other people going through. I was talking to my man Clarence about hurt this morning. A lot of us as men are hurt and we don't want to own up to the hurt just because of what society says or what what society has the idea of how a male or how a black male should feel, which is in our heads. So it's not that I'm basically picking or I'm basically saying that I'm better than y'all because we all know that I ain't got no heaven or hell to put nobody in. But it's just the fact of the passion to where I see what this person is going through. You 44 years old, 40 just like me, and you going through so much pain and, and going through so much frustration, just dealing with what's around you, these spirits that are around you, and you really can't express it like you want to. Maybe it's the loss of friends. Maybe you'll lose a friend if you really want to be that person that you really want to be. Maybe you'll lose a family member. You know, maybe people don't want to be around you. You know, all of these influences and things like that, you know, that, that, that surround people, people are be around you when you have a good time, when you're ready to turn up and when you're ready to turn, you know, things like that. But 
people don't want to be around you when you're doing something positive or you're doing something for God. So a lot of that is fear. So why not pull that out of that person who fears not being surrounded by the norm just because of the way that people might receive them? So it's not that I'm looking down. I have no heaven or hell to put anybody in. No heaven or hell. I repeat myself. I can't get you to the kingdom. I can't. I can remind you of what the kingdom feels like. Or I can, I can be an influence on the kingdom. But I'm trying to get to the kingdom myself. When I get to the kingdom, he might not like some things about me that I'm not even aware about. I'm not even aware of, but at the same time, I'm going to do my best while I'm here in order to try to get to the kingdom. And that's what I'm going about. I'm trying to be the best man that God wants me to be. And so if it takes me losing that friend or losing that family member, if it takes me punching you in your chest spiritually and mentally, because you know I ain't going to do it physically, but if it takes me punching you in, that, in, in your chest just to tell you or remind you that the direction that you're going ain't helping or ain't being a good influence on these surroundings, how would even, uh, even, even Cuz Love, Brooks, Brooks and Cuz Love, right now, have the ability right now as we speak, Harvey Brooks, look him up right now and see Money Snyder, who are chiming in on me, Howard, have the ability right now to do twice as much for the community and for the world than I do. You know why? Because they have books and music. You know? Yeah. They have books and music. So I'm not looking down on any one, I remind you. I use the girl from Goodwill as a reminder, even a reminder to myself. I talked about it this morning with my man Clarence Lofton. That hurts. That's painful when somebody gets treated that way. So if, if I could use my experiences on how I've been treated from females and say, hey, yeah, it still hurts me, it still affects me, it still does this to me, but I'm still moving as it affects me, and that could help that other person, because it is going to help somebody. You might not like it for the way that you might live, I don't know what it is, the direction or whatever, you might not like it, but it is going to help somebody. And God created me to be that person that I am, because you got to look at it. Look at it this way. If I was going doing something wrong, God would have stopped it a long time ago. And I'm a single, saved, and serious, baby, forever. Not it'll be here when I'm dead. It'll still be here. Whether Buck, whether Bunny, whether Rabbit, or the next generation, whether Andrew, whether, whether um, what's my man, uh, uh, Russell, whether Andrew and Russell, my stepsons, uh, you know, maybe it's for Brenton, um, Keys on Mallet Creek, Runs Track for Mallet Creek. Maybe it's for my little, uh, you know, cousins slash nephews and nieces. But this will ride on because there are a million women just like that woman in Salisbury, New York, who crushed me. There's a million women just like Katera who crushed me. There's a million women just like, you know, whoever before that that hurt me but I put my all in these two women put my all in these two women and they crushed me but the difference is is that I can give Katera as much hell as I want to so I ain't worried about that but it's a woman right now who's walking and not even thinking about the hurt that they've done to that man and crushed him and stabbed him in the back and everything. And it's men that's doing that, but men are doing that out of hurt. So hurt people hurt people. And my hurt is going to help somebody, whether you like it or not. You ain't got to like it. Everybody's not going to like it. 
But my 2,000 and whatever friends, they're going to feel it. And they're going to be held accountable. It's good. Okay, you can turn up the Snoop. You can turn up the Lauryn Hill. You can turn up to these artists. I got beat up and kicked out of school for Snoop Dogg. That's the reality at the same time, right? As an influence. But the reality is, is that I'm going to remind you, and that's my experience from being influenced off of hip-hop and rap music. I love Snoop Dogg. I love what he did to the game. I love Lauryn Hill, what she did to the game. I love her lyrics and things like that. But the reality is that basically people are doing something godly and people are trying to help people move within a godly way, and I'm one of them. So whether you like me or not, I'm doing God's will. Whether you really, it, it, whatever you expect out of me at the end of the day, I'm doing God's will because if I wasn't doing his will, he would have removed it a long time ago. So that goes for the people who say I'm going the wrong direction. I'm not influencing somebody. I'm not, you know, people are not going to receive me. You know, people are not going to, gonna um support me or whatever i i feel this way i had an uncle and i wanted to put this in the, i had an uncle came way way from georgia uh yesterday or the day before yesterday to come see people that he ain't never met in his life just because they had a name and a title and i had a cousin my first cousin who came to my mama, who, who both, all went with my mama to this person who has a title. And I respect the brother. I love her brother and everything about her brother because he's a big influence on my mama and he's helping my mama. But the reality is, is that they didn't come see what message that this, per because of what message that this person may had may have had from God, they went to go see this person just because of their title. And I had an event yesterday, and they came out of town, and my cousin and them ain't come step one foot in the seeing what a blood was doing. That broke my heart. So I feel that if I can aim at them and charge at them, I can charge at anyone. Re the reality is, is that I'm doing God's will and I'm doing what God has asked me to do. He already knew that I was going to go crazy before I even came up with Single Saved and Serious. When we talked about this idea, he already knew before I knew that I was going to go crazy and hard with it. Way before I knew, I was going to give it up a long time ago. I was going to give it up a long time ago. But the reality is he already knew that I was going to go hard. He already knew I was going to go crazy. So you think he's going to stop me now? Social media is the most powerful, powerful force right now to where you don't talk in closed closets. You don't talk amongst the living room. You don't talk, you ain't got to build towards me. You ain't, you don't talk in the living room or the bedroom talk. You talk amongst the masses. He would have stopped it a long time ago. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. I'm out, I ain't gonna hold your time up. But I just wanted to put that up in the atmosphere. It's not that I'm looking down, I'm looking straight forward, but at the same time, I'm gonna remind you. Peace.